Hey rockers and punk rockers and people that aren't rockers at all. Thanks for coming to Bloody F Mess Official. Hey, I've got a question for you, man. Before we get started, how many of you would like to do a live chat sometime? Maybe leave a little comment if you're interested in doing a live chat, maybe some weekend evening or something, now that I have the capability to go live. Tonight, today, whatever, we're going to talk about a uh, punk rock band and experience from the past. Yeah, for all you old school punk rock fans, you'll probably dig this. Going back to the year 1984, August 17th, 1984, when I was in a band at the time called Chips Patrol, after the TV show that was out then with Eric Estrada, uh, we went from being called Chips Patrol to Unaccepted. And I can't remember which band name we were using when we opened up for the Necros and Rights of the Accused at Tuts in Chicago, August 17th, 1984. So we might have been the band Unaccepted already by then. I'm not sure if we had changed the name, but for some reason, I think we were still called Chips Patrol. Who knows? All I want to say is a little bit of information about these bands. The Necros are a famous hardcore punk rock band that came out of Maumee, Ohio. They're very closely associated with the Detroit punk scene, however. Uh, they featured Barry Hensler on vocals, Andy Wendler on the guitar, Todd Swalla on the drums, and Ron Sikowski on the bass. Uh, those guys were awesome. They were the first punk band to be signed to Touch and Go Records with Tesco V and whoever else was running that. And, uh, man, I was a fan of the Necros. They had a great album uh, that came out, their first album, Conquest for Death. And these guys were touring madmen. They were playing with bands like the Misfits and stuff like that a lot. That was kind of their brother band, the Misfits. But the Necros were a force to be reckoned with. They were definitely unique, and I... Uh, had another encounter with them later in Boulder, Colorado, four or five years later. That's another story. Rights of the Accused, however, is a famous band out of Chicago. When I say famous, I'm talking about underground punk lore and mythology and whatnot. But it's all real, and they were a band that is given uh, lots of respect for being one of the early Chicago bands. They had a record out called Innocence, which was a great 7-inch record. Now, when I played with Rights of the Accused opening for them, they were made up of Michael O'Connell, the vocalist who is always with the band, uh, even until they broke up. Also, Jay Younger on the guitar. Now, Jay, he went on to some international success when he was one of the members of White Zombie. Remember Thunder Kiss 65? That's Jay Younger on guitar, man. One of the coolest riffs ever. So Jay went on to play with uh, White Zombie, and I got to see him live, and that's another story for Down the Road. Uh, but also, Anthony Alardi was on the bass, I'm sorry, on the drums, and Steve Steppy, the guy that also played bass in the band I was in, Chips Patrol slash Unaccepted. So Steve Steppy had a lot of connections, of course, in the Chicago area, and he got us on this bill, which was cool. Uh, thanks, Steve. That was a long time ago, man. Uh, do you remember the gig? Uh, what happened was Tut's Club in Chicago is gone now, but it was like the first punk rock club in Chicago to open up in 1979. And they closed just two months after I got to play there in 1984. Um, well, anyway, here's how it goes, man. We got on the, added to the bill. We were not on the flyer, but we got added to the bill as one of the opening acts to open up for Rights of the Accused and the Necros. It was $5 to get in. It was an all-ages show, and the show started at 5.30 in the afternoon. I found the original flyer online today. Uh, so what happened was the Steppy brothers, uh, Chopper, Barry, and Steve, who were in the band that I was singing for, they were uh, kind of a straight-edge crew, and they were good guys, but they had their thing, and they pretty much made it known they didn't want us smoking a bunch of weed in the car going up to Chicago and partying and all that. So me and my good friend Kevin Rotten, who helped give me the name Bloody Mess back in the day, that story is at the bottom of my video list. We decided to take a Greyhound bus to Chicago and make it an adventure. And boy, was it an adventure. We smoked our little brains out all the way up to Chicago in the bus. That was back when things were a whole lot different in society. And we uh, got to the club, we were blown away. I was blown away. I had never played in a rock club before, or a punk club, I should say. Uh, I had opened up for the band Nihilate, N-I-L-8 in Springfield and some other stuff in Illinois. But I'd never played in Chicago in a punk club and Tuts, 
was one of the cool ones, man. So when me and Kevin got to the city, we were just in awe. Like, I can't believe I'm in a band and I'm playing in a punk club. This is going to rock, right? Uh, well, it kind of did and it kind of didn't. I'll tell you what happened. We get up to the place. You walk up these stairs, I believe. I can't remember. We get into the Tuts Club. I believe there was a weird stairway, though. And we finally saw the band and, you know, said hi to everybody. And me and Kevin went right to the dressing room. And there was nobody in the dressing room. But the dressing room was cool because in the dressing room, all the walls were autographed by all the cool rockers who had performed there. And I remember a bunch of them. Lux Interior and all the cramps had signed that wall. Divine. Edith Massey had performed there, and then I got online and decided to do a little Google of the bands that did play there during that few years they were open. The Cramps, Motorhead, Black Flag, Bauhaus, Killing Joke, Articles of Faith, E-Trope, Echo and the Bunny Men, The Dickies, and even Sun Ra. Crazy, man. But yeah, Tuts was something else. It was old school vibe. They had a small stage that was about up to the waist, uh, up to your, you know, right here. And uh, it was a very small venue, but if it was packed, it could be very good. However, the show wasn't really that packed to my recollection. I don't remember there being a ton of people there. I don't know why. Maybe I'm wrong, but it wasn't like it was packed or anything. Well, what happened was me and Kevin stopped being in awe, you know, of all the autograph stuff on the wall. And we made our way out to the stage area because it was getting close to time. And we were the opening act at 5.30 p.m. All ages. Well, we get out there and I get on stage and I'm a freaking nervous wreck. Yep. I don't know if you're a singer or a musician, but man, those first couple of gigs are like nightmarish. My first gig I ever did, I vomited before the show. And this one, I was just completely a nervous wreck. <laughs> I remember I was wearing my some kind of weird leather shirt with these leather spike uh, studded armbands, and all the guys in my band were laughing at me and making fun of the you know the way I dress and stuff because it was more it was more like metal and rock and roll than it was punk rock, and I think they were just always like thinking this guy's an odd son of a you know what, but they accepted me enough to let me in the band, so it was all good. But they just thought I was funny, and that's cool. I accepted that we were a little different, you know, but uh, I learned a lot uh, from those guys and being in those bands. We're on stage, and the next thing you know, they introduce us, and there's people in the audience from the Necros and Rights of the Accused and people that had paid money. And I'm up there during the first song. We get ready to get into our song, and I'm a very physical, energetic performer, right? Well, I start getting a little too energetic, and I kick over my guitar player, Barry Steppies, uh, his, like, one of his little pedals that he used like for his guitar and it completely made everything short out because he was notorious for having this crazy guitar sound that was always shorting in and out and doing weird stuff and that night it was my fault i totally tripped over all this all these things that were plugged in caused the show to pretty much cease and boy was that embarrassing people were laughing at me people were just like looking at me like what an idiot and i myself wanted to jump off the stage and just get on a bus and go home but I just went ahead and sweated it out because that's what you have to do when you learn how to be in the public eye. You got to make some mistakes and be laughed at sometimes. Well, we finally did our set, which was maybe 20 minutes long, and everything went well. It was cool. And then I got to see Rights of the Accused, and I got to see the Necros. They were both really good bands. Now, Rights of the Accused are always known for being sort of a satirical, kind of funny band with a humorous slant and kind of, you know, droopy antics and stuff like that. They were fun, and they definitely did not let me down. Um, they were very wacky. That's a, kind of a weird word, but they were wacky, and that was fun. It was innocent, good stuff, man. Um, the Necros were super, extremely hardcore and, t and very intense. Uh, I don't remember either set being very long, uh, but man, both those bands were amazing to play with, and that was one of my you know best experiences that I ever had uh, because it was one of my first. And you know, the Smart Bar uh, in Chicago, that's where the old Tuts is at now. Um, but they used to, now there's a, I'm sorry, let me back up. There was two smart, there was two um, tuts. The first tuts is now where the smart bar is in Chicago. And the one that I performed in is now a cosmetology school. I did some research. So yep, tuts is long gone, but I'm grateful that I got to play one of the original punk clubs. I really hope that you guys will subscribe to this channel if you're watching. It just takes a second, guys. It won't hurt you, and it helps me build the channel. If you like the story, give it a like. If you have a comment, good, bad, or ugly, go ahead and leave it, man. And if you're a fan of the Necros or Rights of the Accused, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon. Catch you on the flip side. Rock and roll.